Brussels, when we look at Europe and Australia, and we look in the mirror, we say, it's a disconnect. The, the, as soon as these people come in, they, they have claims against us. They're told by our left that they have affirmative action prerogatives, that we're, we're racist. But if it's so bad, why would they want to come? And nobody can answer that question. When you ask the immigrants, why do you want to come? I want to come because I have no freedom. I, I have no economic future. Well, why would you have an economic future in Australia or Britain or the United States and not in Venezuela or Ghana or Haiti? And the answer is self-evident. And yet we can't, as a Western culture, say that. We don't have anything to be guilty about. We did far better than the alternative. We do not have to be perfect to be good. And if without a border and a unique civilization and people who will assimilate into it gradually, legally, and willfully, we're not going to have a country that it, it's that that's the pathology of Western civilization right now. Victor Davis Hanson raises a critical point here, one that resonates deeply with the ongoing debate surrounding immigration and cultural identity in the West. What he's getting at isn't just about borders or policies. It's about the survival of a civilization. Western countries are being told, on one hand, that they are oppressive and inherently racist. Yet, paradoxically, millions of people from around the globe are striving to get into these same oppressive societies. That inconsistency deserves serious attention. I said that in The Dying Citizen, that we were getting to the point in the West where we privilege the illegal alien over the citizen. And that's not sustainable. And if you don't have a border then your responsibilities become global. You have to take care of everybody. And you're not modest in saying we can handle between Canada and Mexico, we can create a very unique culture, but we have no ability to bring in sizable populations without, you know, legality, English, high school diploma, diversity of the from the places they come. And so it's been an ungodly disaster. It shares a wider pathology with you in Australia, with people in Canada, with people in Europe that have these people within our societies that either because they're globalists and they feel that borders are a 19th century construct and shouldn't exist, that we're an ecumenical world community, that it's okay, or more pernicious, they feel that the Western heritage in Europe, in the United States, on the frontier, Australia, is nothing to be proud of. In fact, it's a shame. We're neo-colonialist, enslavers, etc., imperialists, and therefore we owe it for people of the non-West to let in without any appreciation of the hardship and sacrifice and courage it took from all of our ancestors that we have to settle the Western United States, to go into a godforsaken natural terrain like Australia and to create that beautiful civilization out of nothing, and yet to try to make people feel guilty about that wonderful achievement by leveraging or blackmailing to let people into the country that are not audited. And so and the final thing, it's absurd. Here in the United States, we ask ourselves, when we look at Europe and Australia and we look in the mirror, we say, it's a disconnect. The, the As soon as these people come in, they, they have claims against us. They're told by our left that they have affirmative action prerogatives, that we're, we're racist. But if it's so bad, why would they want to come? And nobody can answer that question. You, when you ask the immigrants, why do you want to come? I want to come because I have no freedom. I, I have no economic future. Well, why would you have an economic future in Australia or Britain or the United States and not in Venezuela or Ghana or Haiti? And the answer is self evident. And yet we can't, as a Western culture, say that. We don't have anything to be guilty about. We did far better than the alternative. We do not have to be perfect to be good. And if without a border and a unique civilization and people who will assimilate into it gradually, legally, and willfully, we're not going to have a country. that it, it's that That's the pathology of Western civilization right now. This isn't about rejecting the individual identities of newcomers, but rather preserving the core values that make a nation functional and cohesive. When immigration becomes chaotic and unregulated, it threatens that delicate social fabric. A borderless society isn't a society. It's a region in flux, unable to defend or define itself. 
And as history has shown, civilizations without borders, both physical and cultural, don't last. We can look to Europe as a cautionary tale. Douglas Murray has repeatedly pointed out that many European nations, in their pursuit of progressive ideals, have allowed uncontrolled immigration to create parallel societies that do not share their values. The result, rising crime, cultural fragmentation, and declining public trust in institutions. England, once a stronghold of Western ideals, now struggles with the consequences of policies that prioritized inclusion over security and social cohesion. Hansen warns us that the same fate could await the United States and Australia if we don't correct course. I don't know what to do about it, but it's borders are a symptom of that. And I think it's now the one, the a recent poll said that was the one issue that people were most worried about in the 2024 election. I just talked to a, an immigrant in the grocery store yesterday and I asked him, why are you here? We were talking in line. He said, I didn't, he didn't answer the question. He said, he spoke broken English. My Spanish is not all that bad. We could communicate. And he said, I didn't come here to come to another Mexico. That's what he said. He said, I'm a proud Mexican, but I didn't come north to come to Mexico. And I said, you came for its opposite, its antithesis. And why is it antithetical? That's the question that we don't have the confidence to answer. It's not a racial question. It's one of culture and law and history, customs and traditions of a unique West that was multiracial. So that until the West gets its confidence back and says that you can call us any name in the book and it has no effect on us because we know what we did and it was better than not better than worse and we're very proud of it and we don't we're not going to fall in a trap that you're going to make us be perfect before we can be good and look at yourself in the comparison until we get to that frame of mind we're going to be in because i think our conversation today john kind of revolves around that central question all these issues are really a crisis of confidence in western culture and the inability or the fear to articulate what we inherited from better generations what we stand for and we're going to be proud to defend that at any cost and we don't have to apologize to anybody and yet and we know that's true because people i don't i never read about people in australia that are dying to go to indonesia or new guinea i haven't heard it yet maybe they are but uh, they're not trying to get into china but it seems that everybody in your area of the world wants to get to australia and there must be a reason for that these people are not stupid they want to get to your country because they feel that you've got the rule of law and you've got an independent judiciary, you you honor private property, you have a capitalist economy, you have a cons constitutional government, you protect freedom of expression and religion, and they don't have that in their own country and they want it. But they're, they're very capable of destroying what you have if they come in numbers and are told that they have grievances against you and they won't not assimilate or intermarry or integrate. So they have, it has to be measured, legal. People have to come with some skills, the English language, et cetera. Until we get back to that, it's going to be, I, the euphemism would be problematic, but it's going to be a, a continuing disaster.